In this video, we're going to focus on how we can create a horizontal scroll bar effect. As you can see here, we have this, but if I scroll to the left or to the right, you can see the chart will show new values here. And this is quite nice because so you can show your chart longer without destroying your design of your website. So let's start to look how we can create this. And you'll see here, even as we keep on scrolling, the chart bars will not minimize itself. So that's very nice. So let's start to look how to add a horizontal scroll bar effect in Chart.js. So the first thing what we need is we need to go to Chart.js3.com, getting started, this specific link here, and we're going to grab the boiler template. This link, by the way, you can find as well in the description box. So once you're on here, scroll down and copy this chunk of code here. And if you want to understand this code, please watch this video here that explains it all. And then I'm going to paste that in there or cut out the title, put that title in here, paste, refresh. All right. So the next thing what I want to do now is I want to start uh, adding some divs here. And the reason why I'm going to do the divs here is if you understand how chart.js size works, it basically works based on the nested div. And because this nested div has some design, I want to uh, make another div. So I'm going to say here, this div will be a class of, uh, let's say here, container, because basically it's a container that contains this chart.js canvas. But what I need to do as well is, besides that, I need to make another div. And this div, we can call it our container body. There we are. And then we paste that in there. So the reason why I'm doing this is, because the container will control the scrolling effect, while this body here will control basically the size that Chart.js will get. And the size of Chart.js is dynamic based on, or in this case, the width will be dynamic based on how many data points we have. If we have more labels, we want to make sure that the chart extends itself. All right, so now we have this here. What I want to do here, I'm going to put a class in here and then say here container, and this container, we can say here a width of maybe 500 pixels or 700 pixels, depends on the size of your chart. And what we want to do as well is a max width. And this max width, or what we could do here is, let's say we make this 350 pixels. So we have here basically a scrolling effect because what will happen if we have this width of 500, but we have a maximum width on display on the screen of 350 means there's 150 difference. So that will basically create a uh, scrolling effect if we're going to set up this item here, the overflow Y. So if our Y, um, oh, sorry, this is not the Y, this is X. If our X, our horizontal level is overflowing, in this case it is, then we want to say build a scroll in here. So if I save this right now and refresh, right now there's no scroll yet. And the reason why this happens is because it will just fit to the body container, but the body container is now just based on the container itself, which is just this width here, but here it will squeeze into the 350. So you can see here, if I would do a console log, what do we have here? Our width is 350 while the item itself or the div box is 700 or how much that is. I think it depends on, I realize it's based on this one here. Basically these two are counteracting on each other. You could maybe uh, comment out this, see if that works. All right. As you can see here, it just happens again the same. I would just leave this that maybe this would make sense just to make this 700 as well. All right. So we have this here. But what I want to do now is making sure that the container body has the right size. To do this, what I need to do now is I'm going to go into uh, this item here, the config, and in the options, I want to remove what we call the maintain aspect ratio. It's a maintain aspect ratio, which keeps the ratio two to one. And then you will see that here, if I click on this, it will be 350 in width and then 175, which is uh, this here, or this is twice the size of that one, but we want to remove that now, maintain aspect ratio, we set this on false. So now we want to break that, and now it will just go, but of course, still it doesn't work yet. 
So now what I'm going to do is in here, say enter, and we want to assign, or we could basically assign it here above as well. Let's say here in our container body, we want to have a minimum width of, or minimum height of 500. Let's put some 500 pixels. So if I save that, refresh, all right, so there we are. But we want to make sure that this is fully width if it's like this, but if we have more data points, we want to make sure that there's a scrolling effect. So how do we do that? We have to build here a function. This function where we first create a constant, which we call the, uh, uh, what is that, the, the container, uh, what was that, the body or the container body? Let me get, double check, container body, all right. So constant container body will be equal to, and there's a document dot query selector. And the reason why I use query selector because we're dealing with a class and not an ID. But what this also means is the following document search in the HTML document, or this is the document, the HTML document. This here, the query means search. So we're going to search in the HTML document for a selector and a selector is a syntax or a tag. And in this case, our selector will be a class. So it's a dot and then just the container body that was the class name. So once we have this one, now we can start to assign a width on this. So what I'm going to do here is if, and then we're going to say here, what I need to know is how many uh, labels do we have? Because the labels will define here basically the, the size of the width. So if we have more than seven labels, in that case, we want to extend the chart size. So what I'm going to do here, very simple. I'm going to say if, and then what I want to do here is my chart. And the reason I'm going to create my chart is this constant here. And then I jump immediately to the data and then dot labels. That's what we want. So data dot labels, but I want the length of that. So the length of that array will be bigger than seven. In that case, what I want to do is I want to say here will be a new width for our container body. And if I say this container body style dot uh, width equals, this could be, let's say, um, 800 pixels for now. If I save that, or let's make this on five. So it will force a uh, size as well. As you can see here, we get this one, but I realize that our item is still not really correct. And the reason why is we need to make sure that this max width will be three, 700 as well. So this could be basically identical. So if I save that, there we are. But as you can see here, the chart itself has a bigger width because we have adjusted it here below by 800. So we have a 800 pixel or 100 pixel additional uh, scroll option here. Anyway, what I want to do is I want to make sure that this is a formula based on seven. So we want to show here a full week like that. As you can see here, back to its original state, seven items, then we don't need to scroll. But if we have more than seven, then we want to scroll, but I want to make a formula for this. So what I'm going to say here, and maybe I can even reduce the length of this by saying here, constant. Um, uh, what is that? Total labels, I guess we can say, equals this. So then we have this, but now we can use this as a shorthand here. So if this would be more than seven, in that case, what I want to do is, I want to say constant new width, because we're going to reassign a new width, and that width will be 700 pixels by default plus, and I'm going to create a formula, the total labels, that's this one here, or that's basically the length here. And then we say here, multiply by 30 pixels for every new label. However, if we have seven, we want to make sure that, that so the first seven are not being calculated together with it. So we're going to say here, before we do this, uh, need to say here like that minus seven so we're going to go back to default we make sure that we first deduct the seven items and then whatever is left in that case multiply by all right so once we did this and then make sure we have all of these the parentheses are not done here so the reason i'm going to give this parentheses to give this a priority and afterwards this although i think it will work automatically in mathematics but doesn't matter i'm just doing this to be sure save semicolon here say refresh all right we have this now what i want to do is i want to just duplicate this comma paste and then here 
comma paste save refresh there we are and now I'm able to uh, scroll as well and now we have here and how many pixels do we get I have a feeling that we're so tight all right you can see here I forgot one item because it's 800 that's why I noticed that there's two less space on the scroll so what I need to do here I'm going to remove this because I need to do here some concatenation so I'm going to use here the uh, template literals which is backtick backtick which is on your keyboard below your escape button and then I'm going to say here the variable this is the reason why I had this variable already pre-calculated so we can put it in here and then I'm going to say here as a uh, uh, concatenation of string value of px pixel so this here will be recognized save refresh and now we should have almost a larger item here well we have a larger item and it looks quite nice so if I extend this again we should see this again more larger and of course we can change that even bigger so save refresh you might say well look I noticed that the chart is getting or the bars are getting smaller and smaller at a time if you want to avoid that you can just increase the size here how much you should increase well we can do here a estimate uh, how big this would be there will be about 50 pixels so if I do 50 pixels it should not anymore decrease too much we do that there we are and that will look quite decent and no matter how many items you would have it should just maintain almost that proportion so let's copy this and duplicate this again save refresh and you can see here the chart bars are not really shrinking anymore but the amount of data we have is tremendous and that's basically it what I do recommend is maybe to hide this legend and I put a legend like you can create your own uh, in a uh, CSS or HTML simple item here Bob anyway that's it and that's really it here so if you enjoyed this video and maybe you might say well hold on I want to make this legend in HTML but of course it should have this if a uh, click effect well in that case I'm going to recommend you this video here on how to create an HTML legend in charge s3 charge s3 and you can see here this will have clickable items here and it will work all exactly as it should so that's another video I highly recommend to explore afterwards